There are many famous weapons in Tolkien's Legendarium, each with their own rich heritage, and throughout the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, Sting would earn its place among these legendary blades. Who made it? What was its history? And how did it end up in the Troll's Cave? Hey guys, it's Carl here, and in today's episode we'll be delving into the history and properties of the elven blade Sting. So during the first age of Middle-earth, a great city was built by the elves called Gondolin, and its beauty was only matched by its might. Now the city was hidden from Morgoth, the first Dark Lord, and he sent out many forces of orcs to look for it, though they were unsuccessful. Some of these orcs would be slain by the elves of Gondolin, and to help them in battle, these elves used their craftsmanship to forge weapons that would glow when orcs were nearby alerting them to their presence while striking fear in the hearts of their foes. And yet, despite how mighty Gondolin was, it would eventually fall to betrayal, for one of the elves named Maeglin was captured outside his city, and he betrayed his people and gave up Gondolin's secret location to Morgoth. This provided Morgoth with the opportunity to finally defeat the enemies that had evaded him for so long and he would send out an army so powerful that it would ensure that Gondolin was utterly destroyed. And so, he unleashed a force of Balrogs, dragons and orcs to destroy the proud city of Gondolin. And this force was successful, for they tore down its towers, broke through its walls, killed its people and ransacked the city. And among their loot were many weapons and treasures of Gondolin. Now some of this loot was taken by orcs and hidden in orc caves, or by dragons who claimed it as part of their dragon horde. And somehow, during the events of The Hobbit, Thorn and company find a few of these elvish weapons in a troll cave that had belonged to three stone trolls. One of these weapons was called Glamdring, which Gandalf claimed, and it had once belonged to the king of Gondolin, while Thorin found Orcrist, another famous sword that was said to be Glamdring's mate. And yet, there was another blade to be discovered, a knife which was held in a plain leather scabbard, unlike the beautiful scabbards of Glamdring and Orcrist. None of them noticed that this too was an elven blade, and Bilbo took it, for in a hobbit's hand, a knife would make a good sword, and this knife would eventually be named Sting. Now it's interesting to wonder how these weapons came to be in the troll's possession, and according to Elrond, the trolls must have come across some old forgotten robbery hidden in the mountains, or stole them from other looters. Elrond is also able to translate the runes that were etched on Glamdring and Orcrist, which spelt out their name. However, Bilbo doesn't show Sting to Elrond, because at this point he didn't know that it too was an elven blade, and so we learn nothing about its original name and history. One night, as Thorin and company journeyed towards Erebor, they took shelter in a cave in the Misty Mountains, where they were ambushed and kidnapped by goblins. These goblins confiscated Thorin's sword, though they never found Bilbo's knife as it was hidden in his trousers. This would prove to be a stroke of luck, for after escaping the goblins, Bilbo gets separated from the dwarfs in the goblin caverns, and he pulls out his sword and notices that it was giving off a soft blue light. And so, he realized that he held an elven blade, which filled him with courage, and he used his sword to navigate through the darkness, and to see if goblins were nearby, since the closer they got to him, the brighter his blade would shine. As Bilbo walked through the tunnels, he came across Gollum, and he threatened him with Sting, and used it to keep Gollum at bay. However, after Gollum realized that Bilbo had found his ring, no blade could stop him, and Bilbo tried to run away, though he tripped and fell to the ground with his sword beneath him and the ring on his finger. Gollum then passed him by, and it's interesting to note that if Bilbo hadn't fallen on his sword, its light might have been visible, and perhaps Gollum would have found the invisible hobbit and overpowered him. Now Sting would finally earn its name in the dark forest of Mirkwood, when Bilbo and the dwarfs were captured by a group of giant spiders. Here, Bilbo manages to escape from the webs that surrounded him, and he earned his first kill by slaying a spider that was trying to poison him. This act empowered him, making him feel fiercer and bolder, almost as if he was a different person, and it was at this point that he named his elven sword Sting. Bilbo would then single-handedly use Sting to save his companions, slashing at many webs and spiders, and the giant spiders grew mortally afraid of Sting, and they dared not come close to it, choosing to give up and flee back to their dark colony. Now I think it makes sense to assume that Bilbo used Sting in the Battle of the Five Armies, 
and after returning home, he hung the blade over his fireplace. Sting would then pass to Frodo when Bilbo met him again in Rivendell, and Frodo would use it throughout his quest. He would often look at Sting to check if orcs were nearby, such as in Lothlorien and Amon Hen, and it would play a significant part in Shelob's lair, where Frodo used it to cut through her webs effortlessly, while Sam's sword could barely cut a single thread. After Shelob stung and paralyzed Frodo, Sam picked up Sting from next to Frodo's body, and he used it to cut off a claw from Shelob's leg, and he slashed at her hide. These attacks didn't cause her much harm, and Shelob tried to use all her force to crush Sam beneath her body, though this would prove to be her undoing, for Sam held out Sting with both of his hands, and so Shelob drove the blade deep inside her hide, mortally wounding her. Nobody had ever succeeded in injuring her, and she crawled away, quivering in pain. Frodo's body was then found by the orcs of Kiritungol who carried him to their tower, and Sam followed them with Sting in his hand. As he made his way up the stairs, an orc saw Sam's shadow against the wall, though he appeared to be a great warrior holding a sword whose very light was a bitter pain to the orc's eyes, and it ran away in fear. Sam then searched for Frodo, and after he rescued him, Frodo told him to keep Sting for the rest of their journey. Now after the ring was destroyed, the hobbits could finally return home, and before Frodo set sail to the Undying Lands, he named Sam as his heir and he gave him everything he owned. It's uncertain if this included Sting, and so we don't know if it became a family heirloom for Sam, or if Frodo took it with him to Valinor. I prefer to think that Sam kept it as a memory of the Hobbit's adventures and a symbol of their courage, though this is simply my own opinion. Now there are some more interesting points that I'd like to make. So at times these elvish blades seem to react to killing enemies. For example, when Gandalf slew the great goblin king, his sword was said to be as bright as a blue flame, as it was delighted to have killed the great lord of the cave. And when Bilbo slew many of the spiders in Mirkwood, Sting was said to shine with delight as he stabbed them. And this actually brings me to my next point, that I'm not sure if Sting's glow only occurred around orcs, or if it could also send spiders. As I just mentioned, in Mirkwood Sting was set to shine as Bilbo slew the spiders, and later in Shelob's lair, Sting was described as being blue gleaming and would often be shining brightly as Sam slashed at Shelob. Now this could be due to the orcs that lived nearby in the Tower of Kirtungol, though I thought it would be worth mentioning. Perhaps that's why it was so effective against spiders and webs. And Frodo even mentions that there were webs of horror in the land of Beleriand where Sting had been forged. Now as a blade, it was clearly some sort of elven knife or dagger considering its size, though it was still an incredible weapon. We see this in Moria, when Frodo stabs through a troll's foot with Sting, after Boromir had failed to cut the troll's arm as his sword merely bounced off and was notched. These elvish blades also seem to awaken a strong sense of fear in the orcs, and they were famous for having slain many of their kind during the First Age. Besides their sharpness, the light they gave off would also weaken the orcs, as it was painful for them to look at it, making it an ideal weapon when fighting against them. Now to my last point, and the reason I really love this sword is its significance and symbolism in the story. When Thorin and company find the elvish blades in the Troll's cave, both Glamdring and Orcrist are said to have beautiful scabbards and jeweled hilts, while Sting has a simple leather sheath. When they meet Elrond, he mentions the name and fame of Orcrist and Glamdring, while we learn nothing about the history of Sting. And the beauty of this is that whatever Sting was is unimportant, that it can seem like a simple blade, as can be seen from its plain leather scabbard, but when the need arises, it would commit great deeds. That what it is and what matters is that it was Bilbo's sword, that he named it Sting, that both the Hobbit ring bearers carried it and fought with it, making it the weapon of the person that finally defeated Sauron through the destruction of the ring. And I find this humble simplicity of the blade to be very similar to that of Hobbits, that both of them might seem plain and insignificant to the eye, yet within them was incredible potential, and due to its deeds during the final years of the Third Age, it would go down in history as one of the most famous weapons in Middle-earth. As always, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this subject. Do you think that Sting's light occurred around spiders also? Was Sting taken to Valinor or was it kept by Sam? And do you agree with my assessment on its significance to the story? Anyway friends, I hope you enjoyed this video, I certainly enjoyed making it. 
If you're interested, check out our Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, Discord, and Lootbox links in the video description. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, because it helps this channel immensely. And subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.